Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name's Bob, I'll be your host. And in this video, we're going to do another story. And I'm going to put a little disclaimer out there for you. If you have an aversion to violence or gore, you probably don't want to listen to this story. But then again, if you have a vi an aversion to violence and gore, why are you playing a fantasy role-playing game which has a key element of going out and slaying monsters. Anyway, something, as a game master, there are some, th some things that really kind of get under my skin and bother me. And I'm sure other game masters that are watching this video have things that get under their skin and bother them. One of those things is when you spend time putting together what you're planning on having as a long-running campaign in a game, only to play the first session and have it turn into a one-shot for whatever reason. That can be pretty discouraging, but it happens. It's happened to me quite a few times, and I'm sure some of you out there have had it happen to you. Another thing that you might get out of this story is... The effect of improvised weapons in your game. An improvised weapon is for in cases that your character can't get a hold of a weapon, whether it be to not having them unsheathed or having time to have them unsheathed, having turn them in so you can get to another location, having them stolen, or just going running screaming naked from your tavern room at night. And leaving all your equipment in your room. Whatever the reason, sometimes you find yourself without your weapon. So, you might grab a broken table leg, or a chair, or a mug of ale, or even a bone off the cave floor. And improvised weapons usually don't do a whole lot of damage, but they're a weapon at any rate. And they will be successful to varying degrees, depending on what they are and how you wield them. But, I've seen an improvised weapon used successfully, not so successfully, and greatly horrifying all at once. So, this story I'm going to tell takes place during the early to mid-90s. So, we were playing Advanced Dungeon Dragons 2nd Edition. The game I put together, I had planned to have as a long-running campaign where the characters they put together are part of a mercenary group and going out to bring great fame and fortune to themselves. And the players liked that. They wanted to do that. It's pretty basic, but pretty fun sometimes. So, anyway, they make up their characters and... I forget who all was playing, or what all the nitty gritty with all the characters were, except for the main character that this story is going to focus on. So my friend Malcolm wanted to play an ogre. And I had the humanoids handbook, so I had the rules for that. And everybody else was like, yeah, let him play an ogre. He can be the brawn of the group, and we can charge more money for what we do. So I let him play an ogre. And we had like a, also had a ranger in the group, a fighter, a wizard, a cleric, and a thief. So it's a pretty rounded group. The kind of group that you'd like to have in a game. So, anyway, they made up their characters and they got a call for their first job. And there was this rich, powerful noble that ruled the local area. And his daughter had been kidnapped. And the bandits that kidnapped her were trying to ransom their back to him and he wasn't about to do that so he hired this group of mercenaries or called in the characters so he could hire them to go out and kill the bandits and bring his daughter back safely because he wasn't about to pay them but he was willing to pay them an exuberant amount of gold in order to go out and do this task for him and as soon as they got in he was really down on him, telling them that, you know, it's so beneath him to hire such common mercenaries and that it really tarnishes his good name 
they have to resort to hiring such scum to work for him and they were about to walk out but the money was good so they took the job so they go to find the bandits and on their way to the bandits I was rolling random encounters and it kept coming up negative so they make it to the bandits with absolutely no difficulty whatsoever so they get there and they scope out the place and find out that only half the number of bandits that they thought were going to be there were there. So they go in and get the drop on them and they clean up the bandits pretty quickly. And they go to save the girl. And the girl is just disgusted when she sees them and wanting to know how her father could send such common thugs to rescue her. And how it's very, very insulting that he would send this group of low lives to rescue her. And she looks over at their ogre and she's like, Oh, how cute. You brought your pet ogre. How disgusting is that? And was just telling them that she will not be rescued by such filthy trash as this group. And they weren't happy about that. But they were there for a paycheck and that was all. So they tied the girl up, gagged her, and stuffed her in a bag for easy transport. So then they had the ogre carry her, because he's the strongest in the group. And on their way back to the, deliver her to her father, lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, they run into the other half of the bandits. The bandits, given the direction these people are coming from, and everything, and the only thing they know that's that direction, they know that they got the girl with them. So they demand that they give them back the girl they rightfully kidnapped, or they will kill them. And the players are at a little bit of a disadvantage because they don't have their weapons sheathed. So as they do that, you know, they're going to get a little messed up in this fight. But the ogre realizes he's got something in his hands. So he swings the bag as hard as he can into the closest bandit near him, who screams like a girl when he hits. And the rest of the bandits are so stunned, it gives the player characters a chance to pull their weapons and the combat ensues and the ogre is just taking great delight because every time he hits one of the bandits they scream like a girl but eventually the bandits man up and they quit screaming like a girl and when the fight's done everybody rushes over to the ogre and start demanding how is the girl is the girl safe is she okay and the ogre with a huge grin on his face holds up the bloody sack proudly and everybody's staring horrified at the bloody sack. The ogre's smile fades and he gently sets the bag on the ground and slowly backs away. Everybody stands there for a long time just staring at the bag. Nobody, nobody wants to open that bag. So, eventually they know they have to. So they open the bag Inside the bag is the bloody, broken, pulpy wreck that used to be a young girl. And they realize they're in deep trouble. Their priority is they're not getting paid. So they decide, no, we will get paid. We're being paid to bring the girl back. So they pick up the bag and carry it back to her father. When they get there, you know, he's demanding his daughter back. And they tell him, well, as you've pointed out to us, we're nothing but trashy mercenaries. We're in it for the money. Give us our pay and we'll release your daughter to you. So he's like, fine, fine, fine. He gives them what he promised them and they drop this bloody sack in front of him and take off running. As they're running, they could hear the anguished screams from the father as he looks in the bag and then they hear him screaming for his guards to find them and kill them you know bad situation all around but the players get away they outrun them all and they get away so we get together for the next game because that's where we ended it right there for the night so we get together for the next game and 
nobody wants to continue with that game. Nobody wants to face the consequences of what they've done in the last game, and they wanted to move on to something else. So my big campaign idea that I wanted to run as a long-running campaign was a one-shot. That's pretty disappointing. Horrifying choice of improvised weapons. But my campaign went nowhere. I'm sure some of you out there who have run games have had this happen to you. And players can be quite inventive when they play. Have any of you had such a horrifying weapon used against an enemy? With such traumatic results? <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me and listening to my story. Hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye.